these learners in exile. Anonymous here. Wanted to give a good shout out to the basics. Um, if you're involved in the forum at all, or if you're involved in anything that we do for any length of time and you're interacting with us for any length of time, it's probably all gonna come back down to the basics. In our system, that's Shicho. Almost invariably, if people ask me, where should I start? And they give me this big litany of characteristics that they feel that they have in their sword play and, and, and yada, yada, yada. Um, that's all great. But for the, just for the best learning that you can, that you can possibly get, you got to start with the basics. doesn't matter how advanced you are in another, another art. I've visited many schools. I've dabbled, not dabbled, but visited, like a friend would invite me to his school or, or, or what have you. And it's always the basics that I'm, I'm interested in. How do you guys train the basics? What do you consider the basics? You look at that in any art, and you have a pretty good handle on what that art is about. What basics are they training? What are they looking at? specifically and how do they organize those basics right and from that you can then look at kind of the progressions that they put out there and maybe have a little bit of predictive element there now as far as what I practice on a daily basis I have to say it is mostly just basics number one I don't have a whole lot of time number two I don't necessarily have a whole lot of space all the time I do have the training hall here when I'm doing classes and I'm, and I'm here, but when I'm at home, I have a very small space in my living room. Um, I'm trying not to knock over stuff. I find that practice valuable. Now, of course, in the summer, I can practice outside, but still, it makes it difficult to do large forms or Dulan, that kind of thing. Um, Dulan, all that kind of thing, I consider more cardio exercise. So I do that periodically and, you know, Usually, um, the process is me just getting a form back, revisiting it, looking at it from a new perspective, right? Doing that for maybe six months or so, and it'll usually kind of fall back into the wayside, and then I'll pick it up again, look at it again with fresh eyes. So I kind of view that kind of more advanced stuff as stuff that you just kind of, you rotate in, right? But your basics, your the fundamentals of everything, that's what follows you through everything you do. It doesn't matter how advanced you get, right? You, you always rely on your basics to take those steps to those more advanced parts. Um, here, you start with Shicho. And Ataru is often seen as a very advanced form because of its acrobatics and stuff like that. We don't see it as quite as advanced, I think, as many people do. But... Uh, Still, it does contain some, some particulars, um, specifically particulars about uh, generating power, which is something that you don't necessarily need to concern yourself with right at the beginning. Um, that's something that kind of comes later. But let's take a look at that. If you've seen our primers and, and all of that, you'll notice that there's a lot of similarity between a lot of the exercises. Um, doing a side strike in Chicho, just a regular, practicing that, that strike, right? Whether it's up or down, okay? Um, practicing orbits, right? People like to spin their saber and everything like that. I don't probably should turn it on. Um, <clears throat> okay, so that's something that, uh, that, that, that people like to do. But if we look at it, we're simply moving our hands in the same position. The, the saber is not changing shape on us, it's not changing physics, anything like that. So what we're really doing is we're adding sophistication to a basic, right? A sai is a full amplitude strike with a follow through. Now anything with a follow through can then be connected into another path and then redirected back at the target, right? So while Doing something like this and freezing here in the middle of combat would be foolhardy, to say the least, right? Being able to come through using that momentum to continue into the next move, well, that's not so silly, right? <clears throat> so from Psy, we have the basic body mechanics, the basic blade mechanics, 
the basic theory of a tarot, right? This long, drawn out energies which produce a whole lot of movement, right? We talk about spinning, but when we use the spinning in a tarot in real life, we're not necessarily going to go spin 360 degrees. We may think we may want to spin past our target, but the idea is that we're placing our target in between our intended place to stop and our blade so that we won't get there without hitting our target. So that's kind of the idea. But when we're starting out, when we're doing anything, and even, even at that level, you can do the exercises with with the full, you know, in, in, in a taru fashion where you're, you're letting them come all the way through and, and all of that. But really, where the rubber meets the road is when we're practicing it here in its simple, isolated form where we're just looking at those mechanics of, of how our blade and body work together, what, how, how it moves in front of us, and everything like this. Since we don't have to worry about what comes next, we can kind of keep our mind on what's happening right now. And that's a great way to train, right? To be very, very cognizant of what you're doing. So that you come off of autopilot when you train. So you're very, very in to what you're doing. Um, very cognizant of it. We call it yi, intent, in uh, Gong Fu in Chinese, which is, if I'm just, kind of absent-mindedly going through some stuff that maybe give me some physical this, that, or the other, right? If, however, I'm thinking about what I'm doing, whether it's realistic, I'm thinking about parrying and then coming in for an attack, or whether I'm just trying to exert control and produce nice cuts, nice lines, right? Try to feel where everything is coming through, okay? No flash, no showing off, right? And it's not really free form because it's just one movement done in repetition in different in different directions, all of that, okay? If you're coming from no background, start with the footwork. Get the footwork done, right? Then pick up your weapon. Start working on the weapon and your footwork separately. When you feel confident, bring them in together. Lots of people love to rush through there. And even after you learn all of your basics, right? Uh, don't drop them. It's not over yet. You have to continue to work on them all the time. Because especially in our system of lightsaber, right? The terms and categories that are set up in Shicho are how we categorize everything in the next levels or forms, okay? So we're gonna be seeing those side strikes again. We're gonna be seeing the, uh, the, the marks of contact. We're gonna be seeing the basic footwork, those, you know, all of those stances, everything there. It's always gonna be there, right? And it should always be there in everything that we do because that's our basis, right? Now, <clears throat> If you're coming from a different system, or you have a different system, if you're creating a different system, my advice to you when you're laying out your basics is to think about that. What is important in, in the style and boil it down to as simple as, as possible. Um, what we're doing here, you can freely take our exercises and you know, adapt them to what you're doing, of course. Send them back, send people back to us uh, creative Commons, share alike, all that kind of, all that kind of thing. So as long as you tell them where you got it, you can take anything you want. Um, so uh, these will be these drills and, and all that kind of thing from any one of these forms that we've done. These four four, four pillars, right, are good basics for any any art. We put them in kind of a hierarchy, right? But generally speaking. They're all basics. They're all basic forms, right? They're all looking at things in isolation, looking at concepts, and easy to bite, easy bite-sized pieces, 
And it's not until we get into Form 5 that we start synthesizing these things into full-on strategies where there's calls and responses and, and you know, um, all kinds of different things, right? But in order to get there, you must have your foundation. You must have your, 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 your basics down. Um, so uh, there you go. Uh, the basics, don't overlook them. They are often boring, never exciting, sometimes tedious. Right? And it, they're very rarely people's favorite thing to do, right? But when you look at the really, 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 really high level people, and that's not us, we're not claiming that, right? Um, but when I look at, at people who I admire who are actually really good people who I would call masters at, at martial arts, the one thing they all have in common is strong basics and a strong attention to them and focus on them, right? So there you go. Take it slow, take it easy. It's all gonna be there. It's not going anywhere, right? You learn your basics, learn them well. They'll be with you, make friends with them, right? Don't go rushing on ahead, all of that kind of thing. You know, for the people who are watching us and, and, and learning well. So, Winners in Exile, go out there. <clears throat> Patience, practice, perseverance, learn those basics, and happy saber.